I'm a big fan of old whiskey barrels. They make great ornaments for the garden and patio. And whether they're just used for a stand for plants or a table during your barbecue, they're really useful for adding height to any garden. But I've got three problems with mine. Now they've dried out, the rings have gone a bit loose. They look like they need a refurbishment. And when you're having a barbecue, they're just a little bit low. Do you know what I mean? I think whiskey barrels are great value for money. They start around about 40 or 50 pound each, depending on how many you buy and where you buy them from. And this time last year, I bought six of these with the intention of refurbishing them and I've never got round to it. So now's the time to start. The only problem with whiskey barrels is that when you stop storing whiskey or any liquid in it, they tend to start drying out. So these segments have dried out, the timber has shrunk, and these hoops have all gone loose, and it all starts looking a bit ragged. So I need to sort that out. And while I'm doing that, this oak I want to bring back to its former glory. Now, I always had the intention of putting another tabletop on top of these. So that's what I want to do. I want to put a tabletop maybe 200 mil or eight inches elevated from this surface in oak, which would just be a nice level while you're chatting with a glass of wine during a barbecue. Now this tabletop I can make in the workshop, but this barrel is so wide and so heavy, there's no way I'm going to get this into the workshop. So I've set up a little bit of a gazebo just in case it rains. So I think the first thing I need to do is get this under cover and start sanding. I must admit, although I knew these barrels were going to shrink without liquid in them, I'm surprised how quickly and by how much this has happened. So if you're thinking of buying one of these to use as a water butt, it may work well if it's full most of the time, but there is a chance of it drying out and then leaking. The middle hoops coming off are not a major problem because they're easy to refit. However, the top and bottom hoops are the important ones. These hold all the staves together and if they come off, basically all you're left with is a pile of oak. So make sure that these are always kept tight as I wouldn't give much hope for anyone to rebuild one of these if it all comes apart. I start with an 80 grit paper in my belt sander, which does a good job on the surface layer. You need to decide on the final look fairly early on, as it's going to make a big difference to the amount of sanding needed. To sand to get this oak 80% clear is manageable, but to sand to get it to 100% clean is going to take a lot more work. And also, if you sand too much, it's going to reduce the diameter of the barrel, which could affect the hoops when they're refitted, because they could quite easily end up a lot closer to the centre of the barrel if you've taken off quite a lot during the sanding process. So while Stuart's outside struggling with the sanding, I thought I'd bring you in here and show you what I'm going to do for the top and just make a start on that. Now I've just bought this nice piece of American oak from my local hardwood offcut shop. American oak is a little bit cheaper than English or European oak, so it sort of makes sense to save a little bit of money, especially as I'm staining it and you probably won't see the difference. It's 170 millimetres or just under 7 inches wide and I know it's 6 foot or 1.8 metres long. So if I cut this into thirds and then joint those thirds parallel to each other, then I'll end up with a board that's about 600 by just over 500 wide. And out of that board, I can then cut it into a circle of about half a metre, about 500 millimetres, and that will be my new tabletop. The thing that worries me a little bit is cupping. Now I know this is oak and it should sort of stand up to the English weather, but I'm sure in time even oak will cup a little bit. So to try to get around that, each one of these boards I'll intermix, so one is in one direction, one's in the other and then back again. But I thought as well, while I was down my off-cut shop, I'd buy a second piece of oak. This is a lot thinner. This is only about 15 millimeters thick. This is about 22 or just under an inch. And if I laminate these together in a different directions, then that should help future cupping. And it also means that the finished tabletops 
a little bit thicker and a little bit chunkier, which is what I want to see. My only problem with that is although the board is about, once again, about 170 wide, it's not long enough. So I can't actually make the same size board out of this. So what I was thinking was at least I can use this around the perimeter, even if the center it has a bit of a void, because upside down you won't be able to see it. So whether I use this in like a pentagon shape, or a, what's a six-sided hexagon shape, or maybe just in a square, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but I think that will help if I put one board on top of the other, and that will help cupping because the grain will be going in two different directions. My last problem is that this edge is reasonably 90 degrees, but it's pretty rough. So I'm not too happy about that. And this edge is definitely not at 90 degrees, which means I'm going to have to join these edges. And that means preparing them so they're at 90 degrees to the board and they're straight and they're smooth. So when I try to glue the boards together, there's two edges there that actually touch each other rather than deviating. And I've got half a chance of gluing the boards together like this rather than like this or this. And the only problem with that is I don't own a jointer. Just like nearly every other DIYer in the UK, we just don't own these things. But what I do have is a router. So what I'm thinking is whether I can convert my router to be able to joint these edges. They're only like less than an inch deep. So rather than using jointer, this is like a jointer on its side. So, can't see any problems with that at all, eh? The good news is that using a router as a jointer is completely possible for thin edge boards and not that difficult to do. And the ones here came out really nicely. The bad news is it takes a little bit of explanation and to show the process properly. So to do it justice, I'm going to be showing you all of that in next week's video. You just have to trust me that I jointed these using the router and you'll see all the footage and exactly how to do it in detail next week. So I've just spent a couple of minutes trying different permutations because they're, none of them are absolutely perfect, but they're pretty blimming good. I wanted the middle one to be cupped, let's say, down, and then the outside one's out, so you've got that alternating cupping. But as for the jointing, just using a router, have a look at that. Now, I would say that is pretty blimming good, and definitely good enough for what I want it for. So, time to glue these together. Being a DIYer, I don't own many clamps, but these two cheap 35-inch sash clamps I invested in when I built my workshop door, I've used again and again, so I'm so glad I bought them at that time. When I place the three boards together, I find they're not all exactly flat, so I line one end up and the centre and tighten the clamps and then I use a couple of small F clamps at the joints on the other end to pull the boards together before tightening the final sash clamp, which seemed to work quite nicely. So it's now been 24 hours, so I can unclamp everything and then get rid of all the glue squeeze out, which I left on purpose yesterday. And then with a block plane, I can just help those joints get absolutely perfect. Although really, I'm only just taking off tenths of millimeters at this point. And that final sanding is really gonna make sure that those boards come out absolutely perfect. So I'm really happy with that. It's come out really well. There's no twist to it. So definitely, you can use your router as a jointer. Now, I have a problem. And the problem is that this thinner board that I'm intending to put at right angles to the original to make sure it, there's no cupping and to make give it an extra sort of thickness as well. I was thinking about putting it just around the edge as a pentagon, and that I think is going to take me all day. So uh, all I really want to do is cut it into thirds and lay it at right angles. But the problem is this is half a meter. So if I have three boards wide, I need 1.5 meters. 
and this board is only 1.35 meters so I'm short of material I've got enough square meterage it's just in the wrong shape but I can help myself because at this section here as the final tabletop comes round so I can actually cut it at an angle and this material I'm saving here I can flip over and use to my advantage over this side however even if I do that I still think I'm going to be a little bit short rather than six inches short I think I'm going to be about an inch and a half maybe 30 mil something like that so I think I haven't really got a choice. These outside boards are going to be full boards because you need to be able to see the edge. The middle board isn't going to be a full board. I'm going to have to end up cutting it and moving it to the edges so I can route the edge. And that means I'm going to end up with a little bit of a gap here, which isn't the end of the world because structurally the table stop still is going to work. And because it's going to be on the underside, no one's going to see and no one will ever know as long as you don't tell them. I drill a small centre hole in the board and then mark the biggest radius I can, going near enough right up to the edge. At this point, I still feel optimistic that I may be able to cut the second board in such a way to cover the circle completely. So I spend a bit of time playing with the geometry and then finally realise that if I'm really tight with my cuts, I may well be able to do it as long as I can cut the boards exactly at the right angle. And success. I don't need now to cut the centre board in half, which is what I've been talking about, as long as I manage to position all three in exactly the right place to within a couple of millimetres. I'm glad I've got the thing to work, but I really don't know how I end up in these positions when I'm making things. I suppose I'm just being a bit too tight on my materials. I never see Norma Abram have these type of problems. With everything cured and cleaned up, I intend to use my router to cut out the circle. With the board touching the cutter, I simply screw it down onto my workbench. And then with the cutter raised just a few millimetres, I can rotate the board and cut the circle. However, this didn't quite go to plan because what was happening was the centre screw is actually tight into the oak board. So I suddenly realised I'm actually unscrewing the whole thing from my workbench. So I decide to go in the other direction, but then you get to a point where everything's too tight to rotate. Anyway, after a few passes in each direction and raising the cutter every now and again, I decide that I've got enough of a circle to cut out to finish it off on the router using a flush trim bit. So I remove the excess waste with a jigsaw and then change the router cutter to a trim bit and finish it that way. However, once again, things didn't go as planned. It looks like I put so much pressure onto the board because I'm trying to take off far too much material that the top edge of my new table split along the grain, which isn't going to be a good look. However, it came off so cleanly that a bit of glue to both faces and I can stick it back on again without really seeing a join. So the next day with the glue dry, I continue where I left off, only to find a few seconds in, the exact same piece came off again. I can't believe it. At this point, I re-glued it and decided to go back out and work on the barrel instead. I heard or saw somewhere that you can clean up barrels quite nicely using a pressure washer, so I thought I'd give it a go. So I wouldn't call using a jet wash a success. I mean, it tidied it up a little bit, but all I've done now really 
is get the thing wet after keeping it dry recently. So I think I'm going to have to go back to the sander. Something interesting that I've just noticed is at the end here, although the paint's coming off, I can actually see a date. It looks to me like 1977 and underneath the word Imperial. Now I knew that these barrels were old. I thought they were like maybe 15, 20 years old, but 1977, it's going back a bit. With all the sanding done and my view that black hoops would now look better than silver, I take the opportunity to give the ones that have fallen off a coat of black hammerite. And once dry, I reinstall them onto the barrel. With all the hoops parallel and in position, I drill and screw them to the oak staves with stainless steel screws at the 3, 6, 9 and 12 o'clock positions so they'll never become loose again. And with the hoops in place, I can now stain the oak using an oil-based dark oak stain. If you're interested in buying a barrel, I'll put a link to them on Amazon in the description below, although you may also find them cheaper on Facebook Marketplace. So I was second time lucky with this chip that came off. I actually used a smaller diameter router bit that put less pressure on this whole area, so I managed to get it through. Then I wanted to round over the top and bottom, so I gave it one initial pass to take off some material. And it came out like this with quite a nice edge. So it's not rounded over, but it has got an edge on it, which I quite like. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. So all I need to do now is sand it, hold for the parasol, stain the thing, and then we'll be ready for some drinks. So that has come out just as I hoped. I really like the black hoops and the distressed oak look I think really gives it a vintage look. And now the height of this top is perfect for standing and having a chat to friends or sitting on bar stools. And I really like this two-tier system where you can put unimportant things like money, mobile phone and keys on the lower level, leaving the upper tier for the more important stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, bell notification, Patreon, all of that sort of stuff. My friends should be here any moment for a drink, so I will see you next time. Hello? Hiya! Oh, oh that's a shame. No, it's okay, I'm putting any effort at all, it's okay, no problem. <laughs>